What's up guys? It's your boy Kins coming back to you guys with a video talking about some cards that I think could be banned or limited in Magic. And this is just something I've been thinking about. You know, generally speaking, some power creep and just individually good cards. I'm a commander player, so I particularly like individually good cards. You know, I, I like to put, you know, ramp and, you know, or not ramp, but um, I'm thinking of like Antis Restoration as one of the cards I was thinking of. That's just kind of uh, cards that I also want to talk about as cards that are just kind of power creep, just specifically good cards, not necessarily just cards that should be banned or whatever. But the card that I specifically, that I think should be banned, and you know, maybe it's controversial, it should be, I think, Orcish Bowmasters for a couple reasons. I feel like Orcish Bowmasters is a significantly strong creature. Um, I feel like the main reason is that it's resistant to removal. So like you play it on turn two or whatever, uh, you know, pretty early, it's a fairly, uh, fairly early creature, small CMC and everything, so it's really good for that, and just two CMC. But you know, you kill the creature super early, they still have the one one, you know, for the the army token. And then the other problem with that is that you know, if the if the bowmaster is stuck around for a while, or like they've used a wheel or something, you know, kind of the more powerful side effect of that, you know, the two card combo side of it. If you wheel with it, you know, it's going to be like an eight eight token, or in a commander scenario. It'll be a 2020 token or 2222 token. So, uh, you know, there'll be situations where the person's wheeled or done some kind of draw thing like that, where you have like a, a piece of removal and you're like, do I kill the Bowmaster or do I kill the 2020 or the 8 8 token? <laughs> like, I think I think that's just kind of like, like kind of an issue. Like it's kind of resistant to removal. Like you can kind of look at something like Ragavan, right? Like Ragavan's really good. It's a 2 1 or whatever, uh, gives you treasures when it attacks has good keywords on it, has like the dash ability as well. It gives you a little bit of card draw off your opponent's library and stuff. And it's all at one mana, but it can just be shocked. Like basically any removal spell in the game can just kind of kill that Ragavan for you and just deal with that scenario. But with the Orcish Bowmasters, you know, again, there's just situations where it's just a little bit resistant to that removal. <clears throat> the other big thing to note is that Orcish Bowmasters is an awkward two card kill combo with just a bunch of cards. like. You combine it with a wheel, really. And, you know, in a 1v1 scenario, you're gonna deal uh, seven damage to your opponent's face on turn three, right? Like you go like turn two, Bowmasters, turn three, wheel. There's a bunch of wheels at three mana. And then you, uh, you know, you deal seven to the face. And then you have an 8-8 eight, eight, uh, army token with the 2-2 two, two to, to attack for 10. And then even if your opponent has creatures, you can use that, you know, that, eight, that first eight damage or whatever to kill the creatures to then, you know, swing in. And, it, you know, if they don't have creatures, that first, you know, just turn three, that's 18 damage in a 1v1 scenario. And then in a commander scenario, it's enough to kill someone. So, like, uh, it'll be a 22-22 20, a token because it's, like, 7, 14, 21. And then when it comes out, you already have the 1 or whatever. So it's a 22-22. So you deal 21 or 22 damage to someone and then another 20-something. We're on turn three, you know, like... And realistically, if you're playing ramp or something, that's even more powerful. Like in Commander, kind of the powerful line of that would be like, you know, play some ramp spells on turn one to play the Orcish Bowmasters, and then on turn two, play the wheel. So now you're killing someone on turn two, and you've probably played out a lot of your hand for like ramp and stuff like that. So you're refilling your hand using, you know, good, pro you know, wheels are some of the best draw spells in Magic uh, because you're using like three, four mana to draw seven. Uh, you're refilling your hand and then potentially killing, you know, killing a player just outright on turn two in a good scenario with Orcish Bowmasters. And just, I mean, I feel like that's just a little bit too much. <laughs> like, I feel like that's a little bit too much. I feel like that's enough to say that the card should be banned rather than just put at one. I feel, I feel like the kind of the powerful thing of it is that it's a, for two mana, it's two different creatures that are good. And then you can like block with one of the like the token, and then the the bowmasters will continue to make another creature. So like it's basically it's just two creatures uh, for two mana that also has the ability to kill creatures that your opponent has. So like you you get two cards and board presence, and you can also kill your opponent's board presence. And I just I feel like that's that by itself is individually really powerful. Like I feel like just the ability to have like a creature that goes like I enter the battlefield, do damage to something. And then I also make a token. Should be like three, four mana or something like that. Realistically, like I feel like that's kind of the going rate for an ability that's similar to that. Um, now I feel like there's a couple other cards to talk about. Other than that, I feel like that one should be just outright banned. The other card that's interesting is the One Ring. And the, the reason it's interesting is because both of the cards come from the same set that, you know, financially it kind of 
kind of is a problem that both of those cards, you know, the priciest cards in the set would need to probably be banned or limited. Um, even more so because the set itself is a pricey set. Like it's more expensive than some of the other ones. So it just, it just creates a giant problem for the market of like, you know, and not only that, but the products were released within the last year. So like a bunch of stores just still have a bunch of the product and you know, what are stores going to do if, if a box just like the main cards out of it get nuked, right? Like it just, the product will be, you know, based kind of unsellable. Um, but the one ring, personally, I feel like it should be limited and just put to one. The real powerful thing that the one ring does, and I feel like there's a couple things to talk about for it. The real powerful thing that it does is it gives you, it gives you this weird fog on like turn four to turn five, where you can be like at 15 life, your opponent's at 20 life, uh, they have some creatures out, they've been removing stuff or whatever, you have like one blocker, uh, and you go, you know, I'm gonna uh, play the one ring and you can't attack me now. I get to draw some cards, get some resources, things like that. But realistically, what would have happened if you didn't play the one ring is you would have passed, your opponent attacks again for like another five or something, like you block, lose your creature, they play something else. You, you know, you go to 10 life, they're at 20, they have like a board full of stuff. Well, that didn't happen, <laughs> you know? Like, because you played the one ring, you don't get that attack, you don't take any of that damage, and you get to draw new resources. So that individual action is just kind of really powerful. And I feel like, you know, any deck that kind of functionally is going to expect to be on turn four to turn five it just said and if you're not winning on turn two turn three you should have four copies of the one ring in your deck just to create that weird fog moment uh where you, your opponent just you know might have some good advantage and you and they just can't attack you for a turn you know um the real problem i think is that it's a self can the real problem with it you know outside of just like, kind of like the real power of it the real problem with it is that i think it's a self-contained engine where you draw more one rings from the one ring like you play the one you get a fog for a turn a little bit of protection but then you can draw another one ring from the first one and that helps you skirt the downside like it the card itself allowing you to draw into other versions of it allow you to skirt the downside because when you when you replay the the second one uh you, you get rid of all the burden counters so you're taking less life and it's just that I feel like is a little a little awkward, like a card that just has a self-contained way to skirt its own downside. Like it has a downside, but it gets skirted by its own effect. I don't know. And, and the interesting thing is that, like the the other interesting thing that I think is a problem, it's just the financial side of it, where the card is worth eighty dollars or so, where the effect is powerful enough where it's going to want to be played in every single deck that expects to be on turn four at you know to the tune of four copies because you're going to want to be able to draw into more copies of it to create more moments where you can fog your opponent you know and they can't attack you or whatever you draw some more resources um and it's just you know at 80 dollars a piece that's 320 dollars for a card that's likely going to get banned or limited right i mean that's that's a lot of money for a card that might get nuked in the near future, right? Like, and then if you're gonna be playing competitively and going to tournaments and then not playing the one ring index that can, you know, competitive, you know, that is compatible for, you're gonna end up playing against people that are playing four copies, that like are fogging you. You know, you have more creatures on board, you've been killing some stuff, and they go, all right, cool, I'm gonna fog you for a turn, you can't swing, and I get some more resources, you know, and they just get to have that moment throughout the game multiple times at different idealistic moments. So I feel like because of that, I feel like it should be limited. Just put to one. I feel like that's pretty realistic just so that it can't skirt its own downside. Like, honestly, I feel like that's pretty fair. Um, the interesting thing though, like you can, you can kind of compare the one ring to a bunch of draw stuff. An interesting thing about the one ring is it's the first card of its kind. It's the first card that goes, I have protection, and then I also draw cards later. And with the, you know, being a permanent, it allows you to draw cards later without tapping mana, which is really powerful. You know, you get to draw like two cards on the second, three cards on the third, you know, being six total, you know, and 10 total on the fourth activation, um, which is just, it's, it's a lot of card draw for not having to activate any mana on those turns, which is really good. It's just, I mean, that's specifically really good. So I... I don't know. I feel like some interesting includes and things to talk about. I feel like I'm going to take a quick vape.
probably you know ragavan and like uh, i was thinking about like entish restoration as another interesting card um you know entish restoration is a is a three mana ramper that lets you sack a land and get two lands from your deck and then it has a bargain where you sack an artifact a creature i think it's like an enchantment or something um uh, to find three lands instead and it's basically just another uh haro i think is what it's called um and a haro is just a, a really good ramp card you know it's just it's just it kind of just an interesting power creep where you know for three mana you would expect to put you know one land into play and one land into hand um but then having the ability to put three lands into play uh by sacking a land and then also some artifact or something like you could have realistic situations where you like turn one go like mana crypts land uh, play restoration and then you go you play like a lotus petal and sack the lotus petal with the restoration to just turn the lotus petal into a land you know realistically that's that's fairly fairly good you know and that's just kind of like a weird ramp power creep and then there's ragavan where you know it's just individually a really good creature you know there's also things like uh like goldhound goldhound at one mana is a creature that's like a treasure creature an art or an artifact creature and it has menace uh and then also taps sacks for uh mana so it's a little bit of mana ramp but it's also a one one body that has menace so it's just like valid keywords on a body you know for one uh there you know there's a lot of interesting cards that you can just kind of attribute to power creep but i don't know if a card cards like orcish bowmaster and the one ring are going to be like just you know kind of attributed to power creep or if they're just going to be like kind of yeah i don't know i just don't know what's going to happen with them because like in my mind i'm thinking they really just need to be dealt with in the formats that they've they've just been kind of wreaking terror on a number of formats and uh it, the real problem with it is that i'm just not sure if wizards is really going to do anything about it because both of the cards are the pricey cards from a new set that's specifically more expensive than other sets so i not sure what's going to happen with that but i i have my hopes and you know this is my opinion video of what should be banned and limited and kind of just pointing out some power creepy stuff so it's been your boy kittens hope you guys have enjoyed the video peace